So if you made it this far, you've made it to the boss encounter for the Val Disciple Raid. Now, there is a lot going on with this particular encounter. I will say now that it's not in contest mode, I actually find that this encounter, especially once you get practice with it, is probably one of the easier boss encounters. But it does require some practice. The good news is everything you've done in the raid up until this point will dovetail perfectly in helping you understand what you need to do to complete this encounter. First off, you'll enter the main room, and it's an incredible looking room. I, to be honest with you, some of the, just the visuals and the sound that Bungie's put together for this raid are just incredible. It's almost, especially the boss room, this looks like nothing you'd seen in a Destiny raid. But let's get into details. So first off, when you get in the room, you'll notice the boss that's sitting up there in the middle. And you'll also notice that there are, that's a crystal above him. We'll get to more of that in a second. There's also a middle plate that you can stand on and light up. One other thing you'll notice in the room is that you'll notice that there are totems on the left and right. The way we enable this, and you can do this the way you want to, is we did L1 through 3 on left, R1 through 3 on right, with one being closer to where you entered in the room. So L1, L2, L3, then R1, R2, and R3. This will become very important because you have to interact with these later on in the encounter. You'll also notice there's a boss shield that's over the encounter. When you touch that, that's when you start the encounter. So don't do that until you're ready. Once you start the encounter, you're going to notice that the boss is going to shoot out lasers, which will become very important later on in this encounter. And you'll also notice over time there's going to be a lot of ads and there'll be glyph keepers just as there were in previous portions of these encounters. Now let's talk about mechanics. So in the middle, you'll notice it's a crystal. You'll shoot that and that'll give one person leeching force, which gives you, I think, a 45 second uh, timer on it. Once that timer runs out, you'll die. But there's a reason you're picking that up. That is going to allow you when you step into in front of one of the laters to get in something called emanating force. That emanating force is what's gonna allow you to interact with the different totems this encounter. Now, having only one person with either leeching and emanating force is obviously an issue because only that one person will be able to do that portion of the encounter. But you, what you can do instead is you can get on that center plate, let's say you have leeching force. What that'll do is that'll present two crystals, one on the right and one left. The people shoot that, shoot those, and then with that, the leeching force goes away from the primary person, the person at first, to the other two people. So that gives you more people that have leeching force that can interact with the totems. Now, while that laser is really good for the people with leeching force because it gives them emanating force, if you're not one of those people, you don't want to have that thing hit you. It will not kill you immediately. It will, however, give you a lot of pervading darkness, which if you get hit multiple times, can kill you. So just try to stay, you try to use cover. There's a lot of cover in this encounter. Try to use cover to stay away from that. And you'll see him. He, he's very, he's on the right and left. He moves. It takes a while before he shoots his laser. So just keep that in mind. Keep in cover when you have the opportunity. So once this is done, the other mechanic is that you're going to want to take down Glyph Keepers. Now, just like with other portions of this raid, you need to kill a bunch of ads to take the Glyph Keepers. So keep that in mind. Taking up Glyph Keepers is what you're going to need to open up and look at the glyphs that you need to use. There'll be one on the right and one on the left. Once you do that, the person with the buff, so the people with the buffs and the people without the buffs will be able to see different symbols. For one portion of the team, it'll be on the right. For the other portion, it'll be on the left. You read those out and figure out which one's common. On the totems, there will be a total of two totems that have that on there. Now, you can, if you want to accelerate the encounter, you can have two people get emanating force, go forward, dunk that in, and then advance the encounter that way. But for if you want to be safe, have one person who has emanating force go in, dunk everything in, and then that will basically start advancing the encounter some more. Now let's talk about roles. Roles are pretty simple in this encounter. You're going to have probably three people who are kind of exchanging the leeching force back and forth and getting the emanating force. And then you have three people in ad clear. The good news is ad clear when you're not in contest mode is pretty easy in this encounter. There's a lot of cover. So as long as you're careful and use the right build, you should be fine. Now let's talk about the flow of the encounter. So first off, obviously you've started it off, you've shot the crystal, you've gotten you've gotten leeching force at that point, and you're trying to get emanating force. You're gonna to wanna to kill adds. Those killing those adds spawn glyph keepers. Glyph keepers reveal the symbols. Emanating force people deposit their buff, stuff we've already talked about already. And then obviously you're gonna to wanna to continue to have people who have the leeching buff to continue to exchange that to other people. So you keep that going. Once you deposit I look at it as deposit at the totems because it's similar to what you do in the Garden of Salvation or you're doing Gambit and things like that. The motion is the same. After a few of those dunks, then the shield's going to move up and you're going to have an abomination that shows up in the middle. 
So take that out and again, continue to progress this. When you get a total of six of those, you're gonna advance the boss phase. Before we talk about boss phase, let's talk about some of the weapons and supers you can use in this, in this portion of the encounter. So for weapons, I personally use Funnel Web. I use Sleeper to take out the Glyph Keepers and Abominations where I could. You'll get a, if you use Finders, you'll have a ton of ammo that spawns, so don't worry about ammo consumption. But whatever you use, I would just make sure when we talk about the next encounter, it's something that you feel comfortable using the boss encounter. And then in addition, personally, I use Fatebringer because I have one with uh, with Dragonfly. So it just, it was really good at taking ads out. But again, anything that you feel comfortable clearing out ads and taking out, burning down a few majors where you can is going to be really good. From a supers perspective, I would not use my supers to clear out things. I would save those for the boss. Um, if you do need to, if your team struggles, just do something where it can regenerate. So for instance, if you use Nova Bomb, put on the uh, the helm that allows you to regenerate your super. If you're you're running your tether, run tether with Orpheus Rig so you can get your super back. But I would try to save your supers for the boss encounter. So once you get to the boss encounter, obviously, Rohulk, Rohulk, I, I don't know how to pronounce that name, but once you get to the, ba the boss encounter, this is like no boss encounter I've ever seen in Destiny. So let's first talk about some of the basic mechanics. As below, the boss will shoot out lasers, again, as normal. It'll be in a cross pattern, so it's very easy as he's moving around. If you pay attention to him and you're in a diagonal from him, it's very easy then to not get hit by the laser. So where you can, try to avoid that. The boss is very mobile. He can kick you off the encounter, and he does a lot of damage with his glaive if he gets close to you. So again, your head's going to be on a constant swivel. This is not a boss encounter where you're going to be able to stay in one place and do DPS. I mean, you can but he's going to warp around a lot. So being mobile and being comfortably mobile is very important. To get Leeching Force, just like at the bottom, he has a Glaive. If you shoot that Glaive, the person who shoots it is going to get Leeching Force. Again, very important because you get Leeching Force, then you get shot his laser, you get Emanating Force. People without the buff, the Emanating Force, are going to be able to see the symbols and where to deposit things. So there's four uh, corners. If you think about it, you can think about it like, you know, like almost like your controller, right? You can take R1, R2, L2, L1, right? You can think about it that way. But it'll tell you where to dunk. So basically, you get your leeching force, you get your emanating force, you figure out where you're supposed to dunk it, you dunk it. Once you dunk it, a crit spot will appear on the boss. One thing to keep in mind with the boss and shooting the crit spot, if you happen to hit the glaive, you can get leeching force. So just pay attention to your HUD because you're not paying attention, you get that. Then obviously at that point, you're gonna have to do that roll. Um, but that's one thing to keep in mind. Finish off for the crit spot. So you're gonna do that four times and that's when DPS starts. DPS, I think was confusing for some people on my team. The easiest way is the music will change. That's the easiest way to know that he's ready for DPS. He'll also stand in one place and be mobile, but as soon as you hear the music change, you know he's damageable. So finishing the boss encounter, since the boss is very mobile, Divinity will help, but not standing in one place will. So as long as the person with Divinity can be mobile and kind of feather it, I think you'll be fine, but we found this This actually helped out a ton because it's very hard to hit his crit spot otherwise. He has a total of three total DPS phases, including an enrage mechanic. So you're going to be able to have to burn him down. Now, he's not like Gatekeeper where he's gated. You can do as much damage as you want. It's just timed, so keep that in mind. Once you complete one phase, you have to go back down the stairs and do the first part again. At the very end, if you get his DPS down to that very last sliver right you see that little on his bar there's a little less sliver like most there'll be a last stand at that point it'll begin putting pervading darkness on you when it gets to 10 your entire team fire team wipe so that's where it's really good during that last phase to save any supers or any heavy weapons or things for that so you don't wipe as you put all this effort into finishing the raid as far as weapon and super recommendations you, you would balance ad clear at the bottom with boss dps so divinity is going to work really well sleepers Rockets, and then high DPS supers such as Tether, Nova, Thunder Crash are things you're going to use. But again, use things you're comfortable with. And it's fine if a few people, if, if you're struggling with ad clear, need a super, need specific weapons for ad clear, that's fine. But again, just keep that in mind that you're going to want to have something that's probably really good heavy, and then you're going to have a backup if you run out of ammo. But I will say, this versus a caretaker encounter, Ammo consumption is fine. When, since you're killing a ton of ads at the bottom, you should have a ton of ability to pick up additional heavy. You should be fine. So again, guys, really fun encounter. After going through this entire slog of a raid, I love the raid. This encounter is a lot of fun. There's a lot of activity. I will say, compared to some of the other activities, once it was out of contest mode, 
this one is actually fairly simple because if when you're doing when you're clearing ads and things like that you're actually it's very hard to die unless you're just not paying attention right so it's very easy for even the casual team to kind of go through this and then the dps phase as long as you're comfortable with watching the boss constantly making sure you know where he's at and moving accordingly because you can kind of predict where he's going to go if you're doing that you should be fine and the dps to be honest with you he was less tanky than the caretaker was so again going through this entire raid and getting to this encounter it's a fun encounter but if you've done all the other encounters this will actually be one of the easiest encounters in the raid that's the video guys if you like it feel free to like it subscribe to my channel jump my discord and i'll see you guardians in the tower